In this video, I'm going to talk about the tools of Pinta. I'm just going to give a quick rundown on the or a description of each of the tools that you'll see over here in the tool menu or the tool palette. Now, before I get started, let me go to uh, View and I'm going to choose Best Fit so it fills the screen. But before I get started going through the individual tools, I have a link below to an illustrated step-by-step -step guide of the tool palette. If you look here I have a illustrated picture of the tools that make up the tool palette and eat below I have a description and I have an illustrated example of how each of these are used. So I may go very quickly through the video but if you need more in-depth you can use these links and look at end each individual tool that's on the tool palette. To start with, we're going to look at the rectangle select. Let's get back into Penta. And by default, when you open up Penta, this is the icon that's automatically selected, which is your paintbrush. You actually select each individual one that you're using. We're going to start at the top and work our way down to the bottom. The first one in the upper left-hand corner, before I start using it, you can hover over it and it tells you the name of it. It's the rectangle uh, select and it gives you a description over it. All this allows you to do is to select features, just a rectangle, in your painting or your drawing or photograph or image. Now, one thing that makes this so unique or special, let's, let me go ahead down to the paintbrush. When I start to paint the picture, notice I'm not painting anything, but watch this when I go through here. I actually go through here, so selection is the, where I'm working on. So when you make a selection, that's the area that you're working on. So if you don't want to mess up something, let's say, for example, you've got a picture of a frame, uh, and you have a frame around here, you can select just parts of the image or a picture within the frame and so that you won't mark on the frame. So that's a good thing for the selection tool. Let me undo the pencil markings. The next one up here is your Move Selected Pixels. Now notice these are the selected pixels. When I click and hold down my left mouse button, I can now move these selected pixels around. Now the little checkered board that you see behind it, that just simply means it's transparent. So if we were to save this image and save it as a PNG file, the hole here, it would expose anything behind it. So if we put it on a picture, behind a picture, you would see through it. And that's where the layers comes in effect. All right, I'm gonna undo it. The next one is our lasso effect. Now, the lasso effect allows you to lasso an object so that you can do something very similar to like where you selected it while I go. It allows you to go through here and make a lasso around the object on your screen. Now, I can come through here and say move the selected pixels, but in this case, I'm not. It just allows you, instead of making a square or rectangle, this allows you to select things like freehand. <clears throat> the next thing is move selection. Now, unlike Move Selected Pixels, when I move the selection, I'm not moving the picture behind it. I'm just moving the selection. And I can actually click my right button and move my mouse around and rotate the selection. So unlike this selection where I move actually moves the image, this just moves the selection. All right, let me undo both of these. All right, the next one is our Ellipse Select. Now the ellipse select, as the name implies, it's going to make a round object or an ellipse. It's sometimes it's difficult to pick your starting point, but the more practice you get, the better you get. As you can see here, I tried to select the moon, but I got around it. But up here, I can take and move my selection now and put it over here. And I didn't do a great job at selecting it, but the more you get to use it, the better you get at it. So if you don't exactly start it in the right location, instead of moving this, you can take this and move your selection around the object that you're trying to select. Let me undo to get rid of this. Our next one is our zoom feature. Now notice our description where it says left click to zoom in, right click to zoom out. So I click the zoom, I'm left clicking to zoom in, and I can zoom in far, or I can right click to zoom out. So it's just a simple zoom in, zoom out. Our next one is the magic wand select. Now with our magic wand select, when I click an object like this, it's going to select everything that has a tolerance up here that matches it. And so if it doesn't select everything, 
Like you can see here it selected all the trees. I think by default your uh, tolerance is set at zero. So let me put it back down to zero. When I hit select, it only selects the little pixels around. So this is something you gotta get used to, moving the tolerances around. If I put it at 31, it selects almost all the trees, but here's some trees that's the same color. So I undo, so I play with the tolerance, and I've played around with it before to where I know that selecting this now selects all the trees all around. So this is your little magic wand working with the tolerance. You've got other selection modes to replace and other things. And that's something you play with in, in a future video. I might go over some more of the selection modes that you see here. So the key thing is the selection tool and adjusting your tolerance. And this goes along with your selection mode. Undo. Next we have our pan. Uh, that just allows you to move something around. So let me zoom me in so I can pan. All right, this is a zoomed in very closely. Now, if I cl click the hand, I can grab the image around and I can move around. So it allows me to pan in or pan around, not pan in, but pan to the left or right. It's like a big old picture laid on your table and you're just moving it around with the hand. The next one is our paint bucket. When we choose the paint bucket, we can go down here and select a color and we can fill it in. Like if I wanted to fill in right here, with black into the white areas. Notice it's not much of a tolerance, so it just does that little area. So undo, and I'll go to a tolerance about 32. So I fill in here, and if I go back to pan, notice everywhere that was white is now filled in. So let me go back to view, and put best fit. Now if I go up here with our fill, I can go everywhere that's white and I can fill those sections in. So that is your fill bucket and you can use any color like all this gray area if I wanted to invert that I could choose this color here hit OK now I'm going to take the fill bucket I'm going to go in the gray notice my gray is now replaced with white so I can kind of invert my colors or change a color within a picture. Let me go back and undo this get rid of all the colors I made. The next one is our gradient now a gradient works great when you're working with layers so I'm going to introduce one layer for now and this is the top layer and layers works this is the top almost like a stacks of sheet of paper on your t desk you're working with the one on top so the night sky we can see it but there's a layer over it and those little da dash or checkers indicates that it's transparent so with my gradient tool I can come up here and choose a type of gradient I can do like a radio gradient uh, uh, these are the different types I'm going to choose uh, the radial gradient and I'm going to start like from the inside and work my way out when I stop it made myself uh, a gradient that you see here now I'm going to come back to my layers I'm going to say move my picture my night sky up a layer then I'm going to double click on the upper layer and my opacity I can go through and make it almost transparent but I don't want to since this picture so I'm going to move this so we can see in the middle I'm going to move back you can notice the layer beneath it is now starting to show through. It's getting a little bit of a, a transparent look to it. So this almost makes it look like it's a foggy night. You're looking up at a meteorite or a comet going through the sky during a full moon and it appears to have fog in the sky. So this is how you use uh, the gradient. I'll hit cancel out of here and I'll go up here and I'm going to delete this layer because I don't really need it anymore. That was just to show how to use the gradient. The next one is the paintbrush, and that's what it comes up to by default. Now, by default, or a while ago, I changed my primary to secondary colors. So, by the paintbrush, it's going to have a 2. You're not going to see it that much, but you can increase your brush strokes by changing it up here and making them look much larger. So, it's almost like in uh, MS Paint, when you, if you've ever used Windows, how you go and choose a paintbrush and paint on your picture. So that's very similar to MS Paint. You can adjust your type, you can uh, adjust your brush width, and you can choose uh, your uh, anti-alias, however you pronounce that. And here is a, your eraser. It does as the name implies. You can erase something from your picture. Now to start with, it's going to have a default of 2, which is very narrow. If you want to erase something quick, you go down like 14 or something, and it erases very quickly. Remember those little checkers indicates that it's transparent so when you put it over another picture that picture is going to show through here. So that's why you can make a layer behind and put whatever color you want and that color would show through. The next one is the pencil. The pencil is almost like the paintbrush but 
unlike the paintbrush, we can come up here and change your brush stroke. The pencil is automatically set at the very finest uh, pixels. You know, it's a very small pixel. So if you're wanting a paintbrush uh, and a pencil where you're doing very tedious work, you could go back and forth and do the tedious work with this one and set your brush strokes bigger with this one. So there's not much different from the pencil to the paintbrush. It's just your paintbrush can be dropped your pixel size down to work as the pencil, but your pencil cannot increase the paintbrush size. The next one is your color picker. Like if I wanted to know what color that is or duplicate that color somewhere else, notice my color palette down here. When I click in an area, notice what's going to happen to my primary color. Boom. It's exactly that color here. So if I went back to my paintbrush, when I color now, I can get rid of an object by selecting the color around it. So it allows me to get rid of something by choosing the colors around it. I'll undo so I won't mess up my meteorite. The next one is my clone stamp. If I wanted to make another uh, meteor or comet, in order to use the clone, notice it says to, when I hover over it, it's going to tell you to left click and press the control key at the same time. So if I start at this point, hold down the control key and press the left mouse button. Now I've, I'm ready to clone. When I come out here, and I'm not doing such a great job, but it's starting to clone in the area. I wish it had a tracker here. Let me see where I'm actually cloning. But the more you use it, the better you'll get at it. It's just a clone tool that allows you to duplicate or clone an object that's on your screen. Our next tool is the recolor tool. Now with our color picker we chose like a blue as you can see for our primary color. Now the color, recolor replaces your primary color with your secondary color. So as you can see here my secondary color is white like the white on the moon. The primary color is the blue like you see in the sky. So if I start to color over here it's very small. My brush stroke width is small. So if I increase that like to 45 I can color over it quicker. Now if you look I really don't have to worry about it coloring in the blue sky because the primary color is blue. I'm recoloring where the white areas are. Now you do notice a very small pixel here. You have to be color careful if you're going outside the lines if the secondary color is outside. But other than that, you can still see through the gray areas. It did cover over some white parts that was in the gray areas, but it is, as the name implies, it recolors from what the secondary color and recovers with recolors with the primary color. Undo. Our next tool is the text tool. Now I've already selected uh, the Halloween spider font because you can go through here and click the up or down and select a different font that you have installed on your system. And by default I think it's set at 12. I increased it here. You can bold, italicize, underline. You can choose different locations. You have different styles that you can choose and you can do an outline width increase or decrease the thickness of it. I've got the primary color set as white. I don't want to put it here since it's light color. This is my darkest area. I got the font size set at 60. So if I click here, you can see it's going to be a large font. I can type like Happy Halloween. And there's uh, my text on my images. So that's all that it is here is your text tool. It allows you to place text on an image and if you're creating YouTube videos this is great for selecting an image that's in your video and you can put the text overlay on it so you can create yourself a thumbnail. All right, I'm going to go to the next one which is my line curve. Now you can draw a straight line with the line curve or you can choose points on it and you can actually move the line. You can make it a curve line. You can do it in multiple places. So this is a pretty neat tool so that you can create not only lines, you can make them curvy or wavy or however. This here is your rectangle tool. Now your rectangle tool is very similar to your selection tool. The only difference is here you're selecting something. Here you're actually making a rectangle. I can choose different colors and make a different colored rectangle. Now if you hold down, it, it tells you here, uh, it, you can hold down the control key. There's lots of different shortcut keys that allows you to do extra features with this along with the next one which is a rounded rectangle. I'm going to leave this one up here so you can see the different effects. See the corner here has 
pointed edges whereas the rounded rectangle allows you to have rounded edges. So if I wanted an image and make it look like an envelope, I can come up here and maybe have the color that's in the box here change the opacity where when I type in the t little text box it'll look like a sticker on this image here. The next one is your ellipses. Now the difference between this ellipse and this ellipse, this is the selected ellipse whereas this is an ellipse like if I wanted to draw a circle I could come in here and change the opacity or the color here where when I type into it it becomes part of my image. So it's, these are not really selection tools. These are something that you're drawing on there. It's almost like if you're doing mind mapping where you're doing boxes and you can make arrows pointing from one box to the other. Those can be shapes within your image. And our last one is your freeform shape. Or if you can come in here you can draw a freeform. It's kind of got a delay to it. But there you are, your freeforms. So that is the last one on our tool palette, and that is each of the tools, a brief description. Like I said earlier in the video, if you wanted a more description with a good definition and a good illustration, I have animated images on my website, and I will provide the link below so that if you need a brush up or just forgot what each tool is, and I like the little tool tip where you highlight over it, it gives you the name of the tool, a shortcut, of it and a brief description on what it does. And down here, when you see a long description, those means that you can use shortcut keys to enhance those features. And in future videos, we will be using, uh, getting into a little bit more depth other than just the basic features of those tools. So hopefully this helped you understand what the tools on the tool palette are and how to basically use them. I hope this has been a help to you and have a great day.